In this video, we'll look at simplifying the amount of components and component variants you have by introducing properties. You'll be able to quickly and easily customize the look and feel of all your designs without having to create a multitude of individual components. In a previous video, we looked at how you could create multiple variants of a component and group them together into a component set. This allowed you to switch between multiple types of component for different use cases. This is a great solution to speed up your design workflow. But as your designs get more and more complex, the amount of components you'll need and variations will increase dramatically. This is where component properties come in. Imagine you've created a button component set. You have your button variants set up for a couple of different sizes, say small and medium. You have a couple of different styles, say solid and hollow. And you have all the various states of that button, hover, clicked, disabled, and default. You then realize that you're going to have to add an icon, one on the right, one on the left, and the option of no icon at all. If we put together a component variant for each one of these styles, while it might look pretty cool, it's gonna get very complex very quickly. I don't know about you, but I can barely keep track of a few component variants, let alone the multiple ones we're gonna need if we take this route. Let's take a button component and see how we can introduce properties to speed up and simplify your design system. So we're back in our design system on the button component page. We've got our default buttons here, primary and secondary with the various states we'll need for hover and click. I want to add the option to have an icon on the left or right of the text and the option to have an icon only button. First thing we want to do is bring an icon into our design that we can use. Click the Resources button at the top here and select Plugins. Now search for Material Symbols. This is Google's official plugin for their icon set. Run this plugin. As you can see, we now have access to a huge range of icons for free. Let's search for an icon. I'm going to use the Check icon here, so I'll search for that, and there it is. Click the icon and add it to your design canvas. This icon is 24 by 24 pixels and will work well in our medium sized button. So let's copy that one and paste it into our button component here. I'll do the same for the other buttons of the same size. We'll need to tweak a couple of things here to make sure the buttons look good. The first is the alignment of the icon. At the moment it's set to top left, which means that the icon will sit at the top of the button, which looks a little bit weird. Let's change this to center by selecting all of your buttons and clicking the center element in the auto layout section on the right. The next change we want to make is the color of the icon. I want the color of the icon to match the color of the text inside the buttons. So let's select the first three as they all have white text and change the icon color to white. The bottom two buttons here have gray text and the remaining icons have green, so let's update those now. Let's do the same with the small button size. This time I want the icon to be a bit smaller at say 16 by 16 pixels. So with the icon selected, I'll change the size in the right hand side. Make sure the constrained properties is selected. This ensures that when you resize the icon, it will scale properly and not warp. Let's change the height to 16 pixels. You'll notice it automatically updates the width to 16 pixels too. That's because you have the constrained proportions option selected. Cool. Now we have our icon ready for the smaller button. Let's add that to the components as we did before. Then update the colors to match. We're almost set up to start looking at the properties for these buttons, but I wanted the option for an icon on the left hand side too. So let's duplicate the icons we have in our buttons and add them to the right hand side. Select the icon in our button here, copy and paste, and use the arrow keys to move it to the left hand side. Let's whiz through all of these and do the same with the other buttons. Great, our buttons have all the options we want now, a left icon, a right icon, and some text. Now we can start looking at the properties to make them customizable. The first property we're going to look at for these buttons is the text label. We want to be able to turn on or off the text and be able to change the text using the property inspector to make updating multiple buttons quick and easy. Select the text layer in one of your buttons, then click the target icon underneath. This will select all the matching layers across all the buttons in this component set. 
This makes it much quicker as you don't have to go through them and select them one by one. Under the Layer Property panel in the right hand side, click the Create Boolean Property icon here. A Boolean property allows you to turn on or off a certain layer in your component. For this one, we'll call it Has Text and leave the value as true. If we test our new property, you can see a switch with the Has Text label. If you turn that off or on, your text will disappear and reappear. This is useful if we don't want any text to appear in our button. Now let's add another property that will allow you to change the text label within the button. Back in your component set, select the text layer again and then hit the target icon. This time, in the content panel in the right hand side, hit this icon to apply a text property. We'll leave the default values here. Now if we look at the properties for your button, you'll see a new text option has appeared. You can now directly change the text within the button in the right hand side. This is especially useful if you have multiple buttons that you need to change the text on quickly, like so. Okay, so that's the text layer set up for your new button. The next is to add Boolean options for the left and right icons. Back in your component set, select the left icon on one of your variants. Click the target icon to select left icons for all your variants. In the right hand side, click the apply Boolean property icon here, then select create new property. This one we'll call has left icon and leave the value as true. Then select the right icon, click the target icon to select all the right hand icons, click the apply Boolean property in the right hand side and you guessed it, name this one has right icon. Now if we test our component, we can see we have two new properties for left and right icons. We can change the properties for each of these instances and have a large selection of customizable options available without having to create a variant for each. This keeps the component set much simpler and will speed up and ensure consistency across all your buttons in future. Using component properties in your design system will massively simplify and streamline your components going forward. It will also ensure you can lock down things like color and size while having customizable things like icons and text. The properties we've played with here today are not limited just to buttons. You can use them across any of your components to allow customization and maintain consistency. I hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if so. If you have any questions or comments, stick them below and I'll get back to you. Um, in the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.